Hi, my name is Neve White. I'm the Associate Director at Show Studio Shop and this is our current exhibition which is centred around the theme of death. The exhibition was built around this piece. It's by the Gao brothers and it's called The Execution of Christ. It's a grandiose, life-size bronze sculpture which features seven Chairman Maos, six in a firing squad, taking aim at a figure of Jesus. The composition is taken from a painting by Manet called The Execution of Emperor Maximilian. It was hugely important in the Western art historical canon and it's a trope that's been used again and again. We see it with Goya's 3rd of May, Picasso's The Massacre at Korea. The firing squad is really associated with highly charged political works and the Gao brothers are very familiar with that. They've used this to produce a very political work of their own. Here, to look at the oppression of organised religion in China under Mao. Mao imposed atheism in 1949 across the whole country, but not only religion, also the freedom of expression, the freedom of creative and artistic practice. And this is something that the Gao brothers have really experienced throughout their career having exhibitions closed down, suffering from censorship and surveillance of the artwork that they produce. But despite that, they continue to produce this really politically charged work. And this is a wonderful example of that. This is Heart of Darkness by British artist Claire Morgan. It's composed of 3,433 blue bottle flies, each fixed in place on the nylon with glue. Claire Morgan produces work like this consistently hugely mathematically precise, so that this grid gets increasingly dense towards the centre. And what we see is a clash of chaos and order, of nature and culture. We normally associate the swarm with absolute chaos, but here they've been stratified. So we see culture and mathematics imposed upon scene that we normally would associate with nature. Morgan is concerned with a human interaction with the world around us and how culture is imposed on it and the impact that has on our world. Here we see an equilibrium, but the piece implies something more negative, something more like a catastrophe. We see dead time. This piece is called Murder of Crows by Rose Robson. Rose came to Show Studio and actually made this piece while we streamed the whole process live online through the website. Rose produces taxidermied pieces, but she subverts this craft. The piece we see here is an amalgamation of four different species of birds. There's a mallard, a grouse, a pheasant and a magpie. Each bird is skinned by Robson going through the whole process of the taxidermy. So she is totally exposed to death and to the matter of the birds. She then creates a form which she stitches each skin to in this beautiful undulating composition. What's quite amazing about this piece is the colour palette that it reveals and what's really important is that it's a palette that's revealed only in death. If we see these birds alive in nature, we don't have this access to the iridescent blues, the purples on the flush of the pheasant. Rose Robson is part of a wave of young female taxidermy artists which are emerging at the moment. She assisted Polly Morgan early on in her career and is now forging her own path in this direction. This is Kate 2011 by Nick Knight. Nick Knight has produced various renderings of Kate Moss throughout both of their careers, but this is a slight departure of how we've seen her portrayed before. In a departure from photography, Nick Knight is now using 3D scanning technology to produce sculpture. This piece is produced entirely in wax from a 3D scan of Kate and of two dove's wings which are then spliced to her body. The composition references religious imagery, in particular early Christian iconography. Her pose is reminiscent of Jesus on the cross or of angelic figures as messengers of life or death. 
Nick Knight presents a symbol of celebrity as deity. Kyle Hopkins also joined a such a studio to produce this piece. It is a death mask for himself. He took a cast of his own face, cast it in brass, and then the whole thing was plated in gold. The piece reflects a lot of his previous work. His jewellery pieces are often take on a forensic quality. We might see an eye cast and placed as a pendant or a series of ears in a bracelet that you wear around your wrist. Here he takes that element to the extreme and has produced this death mask for himself. It also features his signature tiny figurines who exist all over his face. He talked about them as people existing after he has died. But we get the feeling that they are unaware that the landscape they inhabit is uncannily human. On the other side of the death mask, he's cast a skull in a very blatant symbol of death. During the live studio, he also produced an apathy bat. It's a cricket bat that's been inlaid with 50 human teeth and a beautiful brass rendering of an image that looks almost like a Gustav Klimt painting. Hopkins talked about how it was incredibly important to him that people recognise death and in doing so live life to the full.